Welcome back, everyone. The doctor is in. Since there wasn't a whole lot of response to the previous series where I was reading from the Marshall Way, today I'm getting back to some technical readout writing. Specifically, I'm talking about writing for Battletech Technical Readout 3150. This was an interesting product. All of the battle mechs and units, or at least most of them, had already appeared in earlier technical readouts, either the XTRO series that was PDF only and published online, or in technical readout 3145. So, for 3150, with all these units being reprinted, they commissioned myself and several others to write new notable units for all of these units that were appearing in the book. Four of us were originally commissioned to write 24 of them, and then two other authors were writing a smaller number. One of the writers writing 24 was unable to finish on time, and I picked up seven of that writer's units. So I ended up writing 31, the most of anyone in the book. What I'm going to do is show you the units that I, or show you the, the notable pilots, show you, show you the units and read the notable pilots, and discuss uh, how I went about creating them. Because I wrote so many, I've split this up into a series of six parts. For this first part, I'm talking about the battle suit that I wrote, so the various battle armor units, and there was a single proto-mech that appeared in the technical readout, which I ended up writing the notable unit. So I'll be discussing that one here because it's kind of the odd unit out. So first, the Sea Fox Amphibious Armor. You can see is already up on the screen. I wrote both of these and what happened is whatever notable units may have appeared in the earlier publications of these various units were completely replaced so all of the units all of the notable units in the book were brand new I believe I, if there were any that were reprinted I'm not certain of them I know that the units I wrote the the new notable pilots replaced the previous ones so first for the Sea Fox Amphibious Armor, I have Chu E. Etsuo Nakamura. He was heavily involved in some of the fighting early in the war that took place in the late Dark Age period when the Draconis Combine invaded the Federated Sons, whereas Captain Lawrence Lefty McGraw was one of the Rabid Foxes. Now, these are the special covert operators of the MIIO of the Federated Sons. So they are your Navy SEAL Delta Force types, the, the ultra elite operators who go behind enemy lines and take on the suicide missions. They're the commandos. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's drying out. I particularly like what I wrote for Captain McGraw, he was sent behind enemy lines to rescue the noble family of the planet Verde, and when he found them dead, he decided to stay on the world. He assassinated the commander of the Draconis Combine forces on world, and then left to, into the wilderness to begin a guerrilla campaign. Which I think is appropriate for a rabid fox. Next, we've got the Spectre Stealth Battle Armor. In this case, I created Section Leader Luciano Marconi. So, this is out in the periphery, specifically the Calderon Protectorate. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I was writing a lot of periphery material around this time. So, since this unit was built on that world, rather than have this notable unit take, or, or uh, the notable unit refer to someone elsewhere that may, may have purchased the suits, I have the section leader here take his squad of battle suits up against a Lance of Light mechs, which is a horribly 
suicidal move. It's courageous to be certain. And while they fared relatively well, they did not. They did not succeed. So this is a case of a notable unit that failed and well, things things were just not that they, it wasn't his day. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> not every notable unit is a victor. Sometimes it's the courageous warrior who shows uncommon valor but fails that becomes the notable unit. Next was the Leonidas battle armor. Here I created Song Wei Lysir Danton. This is a marine battle armor unit. In this case they are Capellans fighting against the Federated Sons while the Dragonus Combine attacked the Federated Sons, so too did the Capellan Confederation. The Federated Sons fare very poorly in the Dark Age era, and it's an example of that which I'm showing here in this notable unit, as I have Danton overcoming the defenders, the, the Federated Sons defenders, in order to achieve her mission. Next is a fun little battle suit, the Fenrir II. The Fenrir battle armor is a quad battle armor. And when I was going through the TRO 3145 material, I thought that I had written the Fenrir II unit, but I had only written this notable unit for 3150. So here I have Captain Gennady Sniper Severin. Captain Severin is part of Odin's Fury, a battlesuit company in the first Davian Guards. So the Davian Brigade of Guards is the premier brigade in the Federated Sons. There are the first guards, the heavy guards, the assault guards, the light guards. There are oh, about nine regiments, I think. I got to know them pretty well when I wrote Combat Manual Federated Sons, or Combat Manual Davian, which has not come out yet. However, Based on the, the work that I did for that combat manual, which was around the same time as this, I really got to know the Federated Sons even better than I had before. And in this case, I've got Captain Severin commanding that battlesuit company. And in this case, he's leading a raid against some Capellan Home Guard units. And that's where he gets his nickname because of his accuracy in taking out a battle mech by destroying the cockpit. A notable accomplishment, to be sure. Next is... Sorry about that. Next is the Zephos Assault Battle Armor. Here, I've got a clan warrior, specifically from the Wolf Empire. So we're talking about Clan Wolf, because in this era... They have abandoned their original occupation zone and relocated closer to Terra and taken a great swath of territory, including a lot of the former Free Worlds League. Here, I'm talking about Nova Commander Brent, so someone without a blood name. So this is going to be an elemental in this Zephos battlesuit. And here he's part of a Nova who takes charge in a very critical situation. Uh, I, I have him taking charge along the Monongasippi Ripper, I'm sorry, Monongasippi River, which is obviously the, the blending of two Terran rivers from the United States. And later, after his courageous and successful action, in saving his comrades, I have that he won his trial of position to take command of the Nova. So in this case, he's an elemental commanding a Nova, and Nova is a star of battle mechs and a star of elementals as a single cohesive unit. In this case, he's the first elemental in his cluster to 
take command of a Nova, typically a battle mech commander. So a mech warrior commands a Nova, typically. In this case, one of the elementals now commands that particular Nova. Next is that proto mech I mentioned, the Hippogriff. So here I have Star Commander Tanith. And Tanith, I had been reading a great deal of sword and sorcery. And of course, so Tanith here is named after the author Tanith Lee. I like that first name, it's a great name. And here I have that Tanith was out on a training mission when a pirate band, one of the ones that I named called the Joyeuse Corsair, so perhaps a French inspired pirate band if I ever get the chance to flesh them out to a greater degree, that circumvented the air defense and was attacking in the area where Tanith's star was training. Tanith responded, ordered her star of Protomex to attack from the heights, and the sudden appearance of Protomex in a region where against pirates, pirates may not be as familiar with Protomex, just the, the sheer appearance in a place where they thought they were safe making their attack frightened the pirates off, the Hippogriffs pursued them, drove them away. So those were the units that were the battle suits and then this lone protomech. So that's what I call, that's what I'm calling part 1 of this series. Part 2 will have vehicles. Part 3 will have vehicles because there were a lot of them. Parts 4 and 5 will have battle mechs and part 6 will have air units. Some of those will be VTOLs rather than lump them in with the vehicles. I included them with the aerospace units because there were only three of those. That way I've got a, a rough balance of total number of units among these various parts that I'll be discussing. So look for part two coming up. This is the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be getting back to the next part, hopefully in the next day. And if I can get everything organized I'll run through this whole set of six at least one per day get them up and then we'll move on to the next product that I worked on so I hope you enjoyed this one just a little bit so it, in this case I wasn't talking about the, the units themselves just the the notable pilots because the other stuff is reprinted from pr earlier sources so I don't want to discuss anything twice so I'm just covering the new stuff I hope you enjoyed it and that's all I've got for today I'll see you next time and for now the doctor is out.